Now to the climate and energy debate. The Environment Minister Josh Frydenberg is still working to win over the states over the coming months in support of his national energy guarantee, which the government hopes will not only help bring down emissions, but make energy more reliable in Australia as well. But today, a, fa a fairly scathing assessment, this NEG, this National Energy Guarantee from the Climate Council. Uh, one of its councillors, uh, Professor Andrew Stock, joins me this afternoon. Thank you for your time. Uh, you've issued a report uh, which, or a roadmap, if you like, on Australia's clean energy future. What do you see as the main problems with the National Energy Guarantee proposal? Well, it's got three problems, uh, David. Uh, firstly, um, it won't increase reliability uh, and it won't make energy more affordable. And thirdly, it fails when it comes to emissions. On reliability, the plan is designed to double down on effectively old fossil fuel, particularly coal power stations. Um, we know that they fail in summer. We've seen them fail 40 times this summer already. Um, but we expect under the NEG for those to go for another decade and provide reliable power. So it's going to fail on reliability. Affordability, the government's own modelling shows virtually no new investment in the sector for up to a decade. Um, what we've seen is prices come down recently and increasingly into the early part of next decade and that's because of the large investment in renewables going on now. No investment, there's no new capacity added. Uh, power stations may well close, that will see prices flatline or increase. And thirdly, it's a big fail when it comes to emissions. To be consistent with global climate science, uh, we need to see electricity emissions cut 60% by 2030. That's the advice that not just us, but the Climate Change Authority has previously given to the government. All right, well, just, on, just on that last doing. point, though, that, that, that's really challenging the overall emissions target we've agreed to in Paris. Uh, are you saying that that's underdone, that that should be a whole lot higher? Look, a lot of people before the NEG and the government came down on the 26% said that the electricity sector should and can do more. I mean, there are technologies out there today, renewable technologies and storage technologies, that deliver the cheapest power available, the cheapest new investment. We all know that our old power stations, the coal ones, are going to have to close, not because of climate science necessarily, um, but because they're old, they're unreliable. We need to invest to replace them, and the best new investment, the cheapest new investment, is renewables coupled with storage. Um, so if but is that plan... storage, that battery storage, is it there yet? I mean, yes, there has been a lot of investment in renewables and particularly over the last 12 months, rooftop solar, uh, you know, it continues to expand at rapid pace. But we, if we look at the summer just gone, when we need reliable energy, when there's, you know, a heat wave, when the peak is on, can batteries really carry that burden or do we still need coal and gas-fired power? So if we look at this past summer, <clears throat> as I said earlier, David, what we've seen is on 40, more than 40 occasions, large thermal plants, coal plants, have failed. <clears throat> That's during summer, and it's going to get worse because the climate science tells us that summers will get more intense, the heat will get more intense. So we need to do things now to plan in an orderly way for those stations when they close. Now, storage is, there are many ways of storing electricity. Batteries is one of them, and they have a very important role to, do, to play um, in, in short-term time frames. And then we have other storage, like pump storage, which the federal government and other state governments are talking about, with Snowy 2.0, Tasmania, but that, that, That's South taking Australia. years to build. I mean, that, that, that's seven or eight years away, Snowy 2.0. So right now it's really battery storage that you're talking about. In the, in the meantime, it, what, instead of keeping these coal plants going, you think batteries can carry that load? So what we're saying is we ought to be planning for a transition in this sector. Um, the electricity sector's got the technologies that can deliver now, they can deliver on cost, they can deliver on reliability with renewables and storage, and mo most importantly, they cut emissions. People in the industry will not invest in this mm. business in Australia, and recognising that most of the capital that comes to invest is actually global capital, it's very mobile, they won't come and invest yes. and if they don't believe that policies are sustainable. And a 26% and sorry to but just back to that question, yeah. in, the next, in the next five, six, seven years, are you seriously mm. saying batteries can provide that reliability that coal currently does? You're, you're operating on a false premise that coal is reliable. 
I guess what I'm saying, David, is that through this past summer, or you go back to February last year, it was the thermal stations that failed. Now, OK, mm. if um, people don't put enough faith in batteries alone, and I'm not suggesting that's the only solution here, but we need to be mm. bringing forward in a planned and orderly way more capacity and storage. And, and what should it be? That's what I'm trying to get emissions. to. Okay, so if, yeah. if it's not coal right now, for the next five, six, seven years, before pumped hydro from snowy hydro you know, is, is available, what, what is the technology to provide that reliability? Is it batteries? Uh, what is it? So the technologies will be things like batteries. They will be other forms of storage like pumped hydro. And while Snowy 2.0, which is a, a mega project on a global scale, will take, as you rightly point out, six to eight years to build, there are other smaller projects that can be built much more quickly. We're not saying that you have to close all the coal tomorrow, but we are saying that a national electricity guarantee that relies for the next decade or more on old coal power stations that don't cut the mustard now is really a, a policy built on a false premise. Mm -hmm. And we're also so, saying so for the next, it won't, it won't it's bring this, forward. It's this interim Sorry, that the government's finish. concerned about, though. Sorry, this interim the Say government's again? concerned about. Before all that pumped hydro comes online, it's the interim that, it, that, it, that it's trying to tackle Correct. here, the next five, six, seven yeah. years. Well, so, well that's but, right. But you are saying we, energy... we, can, we can roll out more pumped hydro very quickly and we'll have it ready by next summer. No, I'm not saying that at all. You're putting words in my mouth. What I'm saying is no, no, we I'm need just, to have I'm a just plan. asking, what, what do we do for next we're, summer? We're, we're putting, we, we put in place through AEMO a plan for this summer that's actually worked. Um, apart from the thermal stations falling over, AEMO's planning for this summer is delivered in spades. I mean, I don't, apart from power lines falling over, which is it largely the source of outages that consumers experience, there haven't been any supply failures that haven't been able to be managed. And that's likely for next summer. We rely summer on too. a lot of coal I mean, uh, this summer, haven't we? Yes, there have been failures, as you rightly point out, but uh, th a lot of the time we are relying on coal. And the point we're making, David, is that when we talk about planning in this industry, planning for timeframes that are long-term in timeframes, long-term investments, the planning needs to be done on premises that are sound. We're not saying you need to close coal tomorrow, but what we are saying is that these coal stations will close because of age and emissions. They're not fit for purpose in this century. Um, they're not fit for purpose when it's extremely hot weather. And so we need to start planning around that. That's why the federal government is bringing forward Snowy 2.0. It's why states are looking at storage. It's why battery storage makes sense, complementing renewables together with pumped hydro. But the benefit of all that is we need to have zero emissions by the time we're certainly well ahead of 2050. Because what we forget here is if we take the foot off the pedal in the electricity sector, what it means is that every other sector of the economy, agriculture, transport, uh, manufacturing, uh, um, you know, the LNG plants we've built, all of these sectors are going to have to do much more heavy lifting than is currently planned. And there is no coherent plan to develop it in those sectors. The abatement is arguably a lot more costly than it would be in the electricity sector. Mm. So in why don't we just sector. accept reality and get on with it in electricity? Yeah, well, it's certainly true that not enough attention has been paid to getting emissions down in other sectors, transport, manufacturing and so on, agriculture. Uh, Professor, we do need to go, but I thank you for joining us this afternoon. Interesting debate. Thank you very much, right, Dave. We're going to take a quick break. Back with our